A severe nerve injury had left his arm paralyzed and conventional medicine had left him with no hope, telling him that the injury and its subsequent disabilities are likely permanent with minimal recovery potential. However, I'll take you through this case study today where we recovered this man's uh, arm function, gave him back his abilities, his confidence, and quality of life. My name is Dr. Ali, and I am the Head Transformation Specialist at the Peptide Science Institute, and let me walk you through this case study. Starting off with the client's profile, and we'll call him Emmanuel, and he's a 62-year-old male CEO who came to us in desperate circumstances after a lipoma, which is a benign fatty tumor in his left arm, had been compressing his radial nerve for months, gradually cutting off oxygen supply and causing progressive nerve damage. Although he had undergone surgery to remove the lipoma, he was left with high radial nerve palsy, a serious form of mononeuropathy that severely limited the function in his left arm and hand. Now, when we talk about high radial nerve palsy versus uh, low radial nerve palsy, you really look at the elbow and uh, how proximal or distal the injury is to the elbow. Being that the lipoma was in his upper arm, it was cutting off blood supply to his radial nerve, really entrapping it uh, proximally to the elbow. And that's why it's a high radial nerve palsy. So what you can expect with something like that is a wrist drop, uh, inability to extend the fingers, inability to abduct the thumb, so on and so forth. As a dynamic leader of a technology company, Emmanuel's identity and livelihood depended on his ability to communicate, demonstrate products, and project confidence. The nerve damage had not only compromised his physical abilities, but was also beginning to erode his professional standing and self-image as a capable leader. Moving on to the problems section, and you'll see that Emmanuel had suffered problems that are mostly mechanical and sensory in nature, as mononeuropathy, especially a peripheral mononeuropathy like uh, radial nerve palsy, high or low, it presents as a, what's called a lower motor neuron lesion, not an upper motor neuron lesion. So his brain was intact. However, his psychology did take a hit later, mostly as a secondary kind of manifestation due to losing function, losing uh, self-image, and so on. First off, you see a complete wrist drop where his left hand hung limply at the wrist, making even basic gestures impossible. Then you see virtually non-existent grip strength where his affected arm could not even hold a cup of coffee, shake hands firmly, or operate basic devices. Thirdly, you see an inability to extend his fingers where tasks like typing, uh, using a smartphone, or even simple activities like buttoning a shirt had become nearly impossible because the radial nerve is mostly responsible for activating the extensor muscles of your forearm. Then you see the manifestation of extensive numbness over the back of his hand and forearm as he couldn't feel temperature changes or light in critical areas. And finally, the neuropathic pain, which presented as burning sensations and hypersensitivity, which made resting his arm on any surface excruciating, requiring gabapentinoid medications just to fall asleep. And as you can imagine, that would really trash your sleep scores. The impact on his daily life was devastating. Before our program, Emmanuel's typical day involved struggling to dress himself, often requiring his wife's help with buttons and cufflinks, being unable to type with both hands and feeling increasingly self-conscious about his visible disability. He had begun avoiding client meetings and delegating presentations he would normally handle personally. The psychology toll was equally severe. Emmanuel had developed moderate to severe depression as his condition undermined his sense of competence and masculinity. His physicians had suggested he might need to adapt to permanent disability as nerve regeneration at his age was considered highly unlikely by them. But also, mostly when he asked, what strategy should I follow in order to actually facilitate healing to put my body in a state conducive to healing? The main answer he was given is just rest and not really working the arm too much, not sleeping on it, etc. Which is not helpful for anyone, not going to give hope to anyone. And that's why he sought the alternative approach with the Peptide Science Institute. And now on to our process section where really I'll take you through not just our thinking process, but the whole journey of how we were able to create a program that's personalized, not just to his injury specifically, but to his entire biology as a whole. Because in a case like this, he's only as strong as the weakest link that's affecting this mononeuropathy in his radial nerve. So first off is precision cell augmentation, of course, where we conducted extensive testing, including electromyography of the affected arm, 
uh, CAC scoring, and comprehensive biomarker screening to identify any underlying conditions that might impede recovery and to establish a precise baseline. Next up is his advanced peptide protocol where we designed a targeted peptide regimen specifically aimed at nerve regeneration, stem cell recruitment, free radical scavenging, and neurological optimization, incorporating the latest research in neuropeptide science. But additionally, we also uh, had mitochondrial peptides really in there because neurons heavily rely on mitochondria, not just for function, but believe it or not, also for region. Thirdly is molecular repurposing, where we strategically implemented molecules for, first off, hormone optimization tailored to his age and condition to create an optimal healing environment. Second off is circulation enhancing compounds to ensure adequate blood flow to the nerve da uh, damaged nerve. And uh, thirdly, specialized agents to facilitate innervation in areas showing pronounced axonal loss. Axonal loss is something you can really see on an electromyography with things called fibrillations. Now, fibrillations are the electromyographic equivalent of what's called fasciculations. And fasciculations happen due to axonal loss injury as when you tap the muscle, the muscle sort of shakes in place. Why is that? As innervation is lost, the nicotinic receptors on the surface of myocytes or muscle cells, they begin to upregulate. And this mechanical tapping of the muscle will cause sodium ions to enter the uh, nicotinic receptor type 1 in the muscles and cause uh, minimal weak contractions. And that's what we see as fibrillations on an EMG. Fourthly is comprehensive nutritional support where we created a specialized dietary protocol and supplement regimen designed to improve ATP metabolism in neurons, uh, provide essential nutrients for nerve healing, lower systemic inflammation, uh, we measured that with uh, sed rate and the high sensitivity C-reactive protein, and increase mTORC1 activation across the body. And we also measured the cytokine interleukin-8, which uh, can really be a useful proxy for something like this and a personalized rehabilitation protocol where we developed a progressive exercise protocol that uh, worked synergistically with the biological interventions, gradually increasing in difficulty as his function improved. Throughout the process, we conducted regular EMG testing and physical assessment to track progress and adjust the protocol in real time based on his neurological recovery pattern. And on to the results section where I'll explain and demonstrate the markers that had showed the most drastic improvement after his three months transformation. And that's not going to be just uh, numbers, but also symptomatology, because you have to really look at both when talking about something as severe as uh, high radial nerve palsy, especially uh, in a case like Emmanuel's. So first off is the wrist drop, which was severe and he had pretty much a complete inability to extend his wrist. Second off is grip strength, which was also almost non-existent. He was unable to even hold the lightest of uh, objects in his left arm or left hand. Three, finger extension, severely limited, could not straighten his fingers. Four is neuropathic pain with uh, frequent episodes of burning sensations requiring gabapentinoids to even fall asleep. Five is numbness, where extensive numbness with minimal sensations across the radial dermatome were present. Uh, dermatome is the area of skin supplied by the radial nerve uh, sens uh, sensory-wise. Now, the next part is what's called NCS, or nerve conduction studies. And the motor one specifically is what's called CNAP, or uh, compound muscle action potential, whereas the sensory part is what's called SNAP, sensory nerve action potential, and these are amplitudes of uh, the uh, measured proxies. Now, the radial motor CMAP was only 0.8 millivolts, which is severely reduced, whereas the radial sensory SNAP, or uh, nerve conduction study, was 3 microvolts, again, massively sensory reduced. These are indications of not just uh, sensory, but also motor impairment in his left arm, severely so. Electromyography in particular is where we looked at the extensor digitorum, which showed severe fibrillations, the brachioradialis muscle, which showed moderate fibrillations, and thankfully his triceps brachii had only shown uh, very minimal fibrillations, So, but we had to put it in there anyway because, the, because of the results section being very impressive. Depressive symptoms were moderate to severe, affecting appetite, sleep, and even motivation. As for inflammatory markers, he did have a sed rate of 18 and a HSCRP of 3. Now, that sed rate was technically in the normal range for his age group, but 
we don't like that. We like it to be much lesser than uh, the 18 because some labs, his lab did have it at 20 or less than 20 for his age group, but we had to massively reduce that in order to reduce the inflammation across his body, really facilitate better healing and less um, fibrotic deposits across his body, potentially including the radial nerve that was injured. And on to how these same markers and proxies looked like after three months of our intensive protocol, you'll see the wrist drop was completely resolved. He was not able to only extend his wrist again, but also hold it extended. His grip strength was 80% recovered subjectively. He was able to hold objects again. He was able to firmly grip hands again and shake them. Uh, finger extension, significant improvement with continued progress, uh, expected to reach at least 80% of normal function. Neuropathic pain, almost completely resolved, successfully tapered off the gabapentin, and sleep quality was also drastically improved. Uh, the numbness where... So numbness was not completely gone, but only small patches had remained in really limited areas on his, um, what's called radial dermatome again. Radial motor NCS amplitude was 4.5 millivolts, which is back in the normal range. Radial sensory NCS, again, drastic improvement at 11 microvolts, where he was able to not only feel the pinch of a needle, but also uh, touch, pain, temperature, uh, vibration sensations, and so on. EMG fibrillations, now, in the extensor digitorum, in the brachioradialis, and in the triceps brachii, they were, they were all gone. There was no more fibrillations or signs of fibrillations left anywhere on his EMG. Depressive symptoms were also completely resolved, where confidence was restored, he had a positive outlook on life, because, obviously, he was able to regain function in his arm, which had been paralyzed before. That's a given that he'll gain back his uh, confidence and really psychological capabilities and motivation. ESR and CRP both drastically reduced as well, where his ESR or SED rate was down to 9, and his high-sensitivity C-reactive protein was below 1 milligram per deciliter or undetectable. Before treatment, Emmanuel would enter rooms with his left arm held awkwardly against his body, unable to gesture naturally or perform basic tasks. By the end of the program, he was confidently using both hands in presentations, easily manipulating objects, and showing no visible signs of his previous disability. And last but not least, qualitatively, Emmanuel shared these reflections throughout his journey. The day I could button my own shirt with both hands without any help was the day I started believing in miracles again. You don't realize how much your independence means until you lose it. The program you designed makes conventional physical therapy look like Stone Age medicine. My neurologist literally asked me what I'd been doing because he'd never seen nerve regeneration like this in someone my age. I used to wake up three to four times every night from the burning pain in my arm. Now I'm sleeping straight for seven to eight hours. I'd forgotten what feeling rested was like. Your team's attention to detail was extraordinary. You paid actual attention to my blood work in order to heal my arm. No such tactic was deployed nor even offered after my operation. This was Dr. Ali, the head transformation specialist at the Peptide Science Institute. Make sure to visit this link if you're looking to have a transformation of your own. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and give us a comment for the algorithm. And goodbye.